They say ignorance is bliss, and in Green Hell's case, that couldn't be any more accurate. See, Green Hell originally released on PC as a flat screen game, then got a VR version of that very same game. Eventually the Quest got a version too, with more VRAF interactions, but also somewhat smaller maps and less structures to craft. Now, I've never played either of those versions, which means when I played it on PSVR 2, I wasn't focused on what version we got, or what was included in the game, or what got left out. I could just play it and have fun. And I did. After starting the campaign, it becomes immediately apparent that Green Helm, despite being a survival game, also has a heavy focus on narrative. You're out there in the jungle with your partner Mia, who's there to study the native population. But unsurprisingly, you and Mia get separated fast, and throughout the game you'll be communicating with her via radio. This might turn off players who want to focus solely on surviving in the wilderness. And for those people, there is a survival mode where you're just thrown into the jungle, sans narrative, to see how long you can survive. But for me, the story was a nice break from the constant stress of being out there in the wilderness, especially at first, when you come across unexpected landmarks and learn more about your own backstory. It sadly doesn't go anywhere, which means it wore out its welcome by the end of my 11 hour run through the campaign. Luckily though, the story isn't the real draw here. It's the challenge of surviving out in the wilderness with more survival mechanics than even Song in the Smoke. It's kind of insane how much you have to do and monitor just to stay alive. For example, are you ready for this? Eating everything in sight to keep up your carb, fat, and protein levels, avoiding things that will poison you and make you sick. Purifying water to stay hydrated and avoid getting parasites. Sleeping whenever possible, but also make sure you sleep long enough not to get insomnia. Keeping an eye on your body for leeches, bites, and lacerations, all while walking through the jungle listening for spiders, scorpions, rattlesnakes, or worse, pumas and alligators that'll sneak up on you and kill you before you even know they're there. There are four difficulty settings in total though, two easier ones for a more casual experience and a harder one for all you hardcore survival freaks out there. And if you want to get real crazy, there are additional challenges to complete, completely separate from the campaign itself with online leaderboards. These seem like they'll be fun for a while, but I can't imagine I'll be going back to them once I post a high score or two. As you progress through the jungle, you'll gradually learn to craft various items that'll help you survive out there. It's all very paint by numbers, where you just put the stuff where the game tells you to. But it's more about going out, chopping down trees, and gathering the materials necessary in order to build the stuff. Campfires, shelters, water filters, and yeah, there's a bow you can find early in the game, but I didn't find it. Which means when I finally crafted a bow and arrows almost five hours into the game, it felt like a total game changer. I went from playing defensively with a crude little axe made from a stick and a rock, to creeping through the jungle, literally hunting my former predators, cooking their meat, and eating like a king. For a night at least. It's easy to lose track of what you should be doing and even easier when you're spending precious time setting up camp so that you can have a good night's sleep and save your game. But your next objective is always listed in your journal to keep you on track, along with the effects of everything you've eaten and, if you found one, a map of the current area. Um, well, I might have come across the Cayman. But interacting with these things isn't quite as easy as it should be. You've got a few things mapped to your body, a couple of holster slots, and a Saints and Sinners style backpack strapped over your shoulder. And all of this works okay for the most part. But taking the right things out of your backpack can get tricky, and flipping through the many pages of your inventory takes way more time than it should. And while grabbing resources from the jungle generally doesn't present an issue, every so often the game simply refuses to let you pick up an item you're looking at. There is an eye tracking option in the menu to help alleviate these problems, but I don't think they helped as much as they should. And really, I think we can all agree that Incubo should instead be using eye tracking along with foveated rendering to help increase the resolution in the environments a bit. More on that later. I did hit one major game breaking bug late in the game. When the first bow that I crafted finally broke, it caused the bow to jump out of my hands and flip out, and in doing so completely removed my ability to interact with anything in the world, including my weapons or my backpack. It's an easy issue to work around, just ditch your bow and go craft a new one, but it's still really annoying. And Kubo is aware of it though, and will hopefully be able to patch it soon. Despite some complaints, Green Hell actually looks pretty good. There's a lot of detail in the world, good looking rivers, an impressive day and night cycle with great lighting, destructible plants everywhere that gently sway in the breeze, 
And when it rains, it coats the whole jungle in a realistic sheen. Now, everything up close looks pretty sharp, but the complaints come from a kind of generic wallpaper looking ground and the fact that everything in the distance looks lower res than you'd expect for a PSVR 2 game. Now, I get over it within about 20 minutes or so and still think the game looks pretty good, but your mileage may vary. What I never quite got over though were the loading screens that popped up between areas, which simply shouldn't be a thing on PSVR 2, especially considering the speed of the SSD. The map is pretty large, sure, but it's not open world, and there are caves here that you have to walk through that obstruct your vision between areas, and these literally exist in other games in order to avoid loading screens and allow the next area of the world to be loaded in before exiting the cave, so none of this really makes any sense. Now, there's not much of a soundtrack to speak of, which is fine. It's a survival game, and you need to keep your ears opening, listening for rattlesnakes and other dangerous creatures. But the sound design overall just feels sloppy. The sound of the jungle will randomly fade out and fade back in as you walk along. And especially later in the game, the audio clips are all over the place in terms of both volume and quality. If I'd stopped playing Green Hell VR maybe 5 or 6 hours in, I probably would have scored it a 9 out of 10. The crafting feels good, the tension never lets up, and you truly feel like a badass for continuing to survive day after day in this treacherous jungle. While Green Hell sets up a great mystery and features some of the deepest gameplay yet on PSVR 2, by the end of the game, you can't help but feel a little let down from an overall lack of polish and a disappointing third act. Tasty. Hey, what are you doing here? <laughs> hey, wait! What the... Ha 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 